Hi, I'm Laren. This is Knife Steel Nerds. Today we're talking about Venatus 60, which is an Udahome steel. And this study was a collaboration between myself and Malachi, Malachi of Trupa Knives. He has his own Patreon where he's doing steel studies. He is completing his bachelor's degree in material science right now. So if you want to see his studies as they come out, please go to his Patreon page and become a supporter. Oh, he did the initial heat treating experiments and he did some metallography, including some fancy, fun electron microscopy. So thanks, Malachi, that we were able to do this study together. But to give a little bit of background on the steel, we need to go way back to the 1930s and early 1940s. So it was at that point that metallurgists developed high vanadium high-speed steel. So before then, the high-speed steels max out around 2% vanadium. And if they went above that, the steel would no longer harden. So in the 1930s, they figured out that they needed to add more carbon along with the vanadium because a lot of the carbon would be tied up in the vanadium carbides that are formed. So they made higher vanadium steels, including M4 and T15. And if they went any higher than about 4 or 5% vanadium, then the carbides would become too large and the steel would fracture during forging and rolling. So that was the limit for a long time. In the 1960s, a bunch of steel companies started developing high-speed steels that could be heat treated to 70 Rockwell C. The most common of these was by Vasco called Hypercut, patented in 1963, and it was given the designation M42. But what they realized is that if they used large cobalt additions, like 5 or even as high as 12%, in combination with increased carbon, they could get high hardness. Part of this was technology. They couldn't control the carbon uh, tightly enough before then. But technology had improved to the point where they could really max out the carbon content without adding too much. And then get these 70 Rockwell C steels. So anyway, hypercut was the most common. Then also, in the late 60s into 1970, Crucible developed powder metallurgy technology for making tool steels and high-speed steels. Initially, they just made powder metallurgy versions of existing steels, like M2 or T15 or M4. But soon after, they were designing steels specifically for powder metallurgy. The first one was CPM Rec 76, patented in 1972, which was a high-hardness, high-speed steel with 3% vanadium. Shortly after Crucible introduced their powder metallurgy technology, Stora in Sweden introduced their own version. This led to a big legal battle, and eventually Stora and Udahom, which became tied to Stora, they had to pay fines. And anyway, that came later. Before then, Stora developed a high vanadium 70 Rockwell high-speed steel called ASP-60, ASP-60, which was introduced around 1975. It had 6.5% vanadium, for higher wear resistance than steels like Rex 76. So this kind of combined the two ideas together. M4 and T15 had the high vanadium for high wear resistance. The high hardness, high speed steels prior, like Hypercut, they were designed for 70 Rockwell and ASP 60 combined the two things together. A 70 Rockwell steel that also has very high vanadium, in this case, even higher than was previously possible with conventional casting technology with six and a half percent vanadium. Now, Udahome purchased Stora in 1976. In 1978, Crucible published results of experiments they did comparing Rec 76 and ASP 60. And they claimed that higher than 3% vanadium did not lead to better performance in the tools. They also made a 6% vanadium version of Rec 76, also to demonstrate that the increased vanadium did not lead to higher tool life. Now, Udahom was not happy about this, so they responded to the paper. Uh, this guy, J.H.G. Stake, he said, I represent the firm that sells the steel mentioned, which is available commercially, by the ASEA Stora process. It is very difficult to comment on the slides here regarding the comparison between ASP 60, Rec 76, and Rec 76 with 6% vanadium. The main reason is that the trials have been done without any coolant, and that is very unusual in commercial application in general practice. We prefer to go to the tool making industry and have the trials made there. Now, for those that don't speak metallurgist, these are fighting words. You know, they're saying, let's go to the tool making industry and we'll see who wins under real conditions. And they're saying that Crucible's conditions using no coolant is unrealistic. And that's why the results don't show the ASP 60 having better tool life. 
We'll settle this the old Navy way. First guy to die, loses! So, Udahom would sell their version of ASP-60 under the name Venatus-60, which is the steel that Malachi and I tested. And Era Steel, which also had historical connections to Stora, they would sell it under the name ASP-2060. So, both of them have the same composition, the same as the original ASP-60. Oh, and despite Crucible's earlier claims about 3% vanadium being as much as is necessary, they would later release higher vanadium versions of Rex 76. They made a 9.5% vanadium version called Rex 121, released in 1998, and they released a 5% vanadium version known as Rex 86, released in 2005. Zap sells the same steel as Zmax. There are other high vanadium 70 Rockwell powder metallurgy high speed steels that are made by other companies, including HAP 72. Maximet, and S290. And we're going to compare some of those to each other uh, in this video. So if you want to learn more about the exciting world of knife steel and tool steel history and a history of modern knife industry, including custom knives, high-end production knives in Damascus, see my book, The Story of Knife Steel. So Venetus 60, uh, quite high in carbon at 2.3%. It also has substantial molybdenum and tungsten added for a property called hot hardness. That is the ability for a steel to maintain its hardness at high temperatures. It works by precipitating very tiny molybdenum and tungsten carbides when tempering around 1,000 degrees or so. The vanadium content is very high at 6.5%, primarily for wear resistance, but that also contributes to hot hardness as well as chromium. And cobalt is added to improve hot hardness in a different way. Rather than forming cobalt carbides, which cobalt does not, it affects how the carbides form during the secondary hardening. So it's affecting how the molybdenum and tungsten carbides form instead. That's what cobalt does. Now the toughness and wear resistance of high speed steels is largely controlled by the carbides. So this steel has a lot of molybdenum, tungsten, and vanadium. So it will form some M6C carbide. Those are carbides formed primarily with tungsten and molybdenum. And MC carbides, the M in the MC, is primarily vanadium in this case. Usually, vanadium carbides are more desirable because they are harder and smaller than the tungsten molybdenum M6C carbides. So the vanadium carbides are less detrimental for toughness because they're small, and they also contribute more to wear resistance. So a smaller amount gives you more wear resistance, and a smaller amount of carbide usually means more toughness. So we want to balance steels by having primarily vanadium carbide. So I have calculated carbide contents using thermocalc for Venetus 60, Rex 86, Maximet, and Rex 121. Oh, these are equilibrium calculations, meaning they assume an infinite hold time. When we heat treat, we usually only hold for like 10, 15, 20, 30 minutes, and so it's definitely not at equilibrium, but they are often pretty close to what we get experimentally. So if we look at these different carbide volume contents, at least with the predictions, we would expect Maximet to have the highest toughness because it has the lowest carbide volume at 19%. Followed by Rex 86, then Venetus 60, and finally Rex 121 would have the worst toughness. Maximet and Venetus 60 have a similar vanadium carbide content, but Venetus 60 has higher M6C. So we would expect Venetus 60 to have higher wear resistance than Rex 76, Rex 86, and Maximet, but less than Rex 121. Now, Malachi took a micrograph of the Venetus 60, and it has a, a pretty good carbide structure. It has similar carbide volume to what we predicted. There is some connection between the carbides. They're not discrete, uh, but they're also pretty small. The carbides are a bit smaller than what we see in Maximet and Zmax. Uh, but the Z-Max has a bit less carbide, it appears, and the Rex 121 has quite a lot of carbide, as we might expect from it having almost 10% vanadium and over 3% carbon. So when we take those micrographs, we can point count them and figure out the volume, or in, actually the area, which is equivalent to the volume, of the carbide. So Venetus 60 has between 20 and 24% carbide, Rex 86 only 16.5%, Maximet 22, and Rex 121, 30%. Now, Malachi also took SEM micrographs of Venetus 60, austenitized at two different temperatures, and then he used backscatter imaging, which helps to observe composition differences in the steel. In this case, the vanadium carbides show up as gray particles, while the M6C 
tungsten molybdenum carbides are white because it's they're heavier atomically. And so he point counted the carbides with these two different colors and then compared to what thermocalc predicts. And in this case, thermocalc predicted more carbide than what was observed experimentally. This is somewhat surprising because like we discussed before, thermocalc is predicting equilibrium, so usually it predicts less carbide. So what we think is going on based on these measurements, you'll notice experimentally there is less M6C carbide and more of the MC, the vanadium carbide. So it seems like thermocalc is over predicting the amount of M6C and under predicting the amount of MC carbide. And that is leading to differences between experimental measurements and the thermocalc predictions. When it comes to heat treating and hardness, I've got the hardness chart here from the ASP 2060 data sheet. It has a better hardness chart than the Veneta 60 data sheet. And you can see that it can get quite hard, you know, up to 70 Rockwell and even slightly higher. Malachi did a couple of heat treatments of his own. He did 2025 with a 1000 degree temper that got about 70.5 Rockwell and 1900 with a 1000 degree temper that got about 68.8 Rockwell. So a thousand degree temper, that's about 540 and a 1900, that's about 1040. So that looks about right on the chart, a little bit higher from Malachi's readings. And that's probably because he used cryo. Cryo can sometimes shift secondary hardening one direction or another, but in this case, it leads to higher hardness. Malachi also austenitized the Catra coupon that I tested at 2025, that's 1100 Celsius, and then I tempered it at 1000 degrees, 540 Celsius. I got 68.4 Rockwell. Malachi was checking the temperature measurement of his furnace later and found it was reading too high. So the furnace temperature was probably lower than 2025, which may explain why the hardness was lower than his previous coupon, Austin in 1900. I also heat treated toughness coupons using 2025 and 1000 degrees, and I got 69.0 Rockwell. So as expected, Veneta 60 is capable of very high hardness. So Malachi he treated and ground the Catra knife coupon that I tested for slicing edge retention. And somewhat surprisingly, the edge retention was only slightly higher than ZMAX after compensating for hardness. You'll see these dotted gray lines are the expected trend of hardness with edge retention. So once compensated for hardness, the Veneta 60 was only slightly better than ZMAX. This is surprising because both Maximet and Veneta 60 have similar carbide volumes. Also, Maximet and Veneta 60 have similar vanadium and carbon content, while Zmax is a little bit lower in both of those elements. So why would it be performing similarly to the Zmax and not the Maximet? Now, we previously discussed that thermocalc seems to be under predicting vanadium carbide and over predicting tungsten and molybdenum carbides, the M6C carbides. So it could be that something similar is happening in, in Maximet. Another thing to point out is that the tungsten equivalent is different between Maximet and Venatus 60. To get a tungsten equivalent, you have to multiply the molybdenum by 2 because tungsten is hev heavier atomically. So, once you look at the tungsten equivalent of the two grades, Maximet is a 13, while Venatus 60 is 20.5. So, this could mean that the Maximet is mostly vanadium carbide, or at least has a higher proportion of vanadium carbide, even though the two have the same carbide volume. We would have to do backscatter imaging with Maximet to confirm if this is the case, but that would perhaps explain why Maximet has higher edge retention, even though the two have a similar carbide volume and they have a similar carbon and vanadium content. So as mentioned, the Sharpie coupon was 69 Rockwell, very high in hardness and the carbide volume's also pretty high at 22%. So as expected, the toughness was fairly low at 2.7 foot-pounds. But you'll also notice on the chart that the higher the hardness is, the closer the steels are to each other. So like at 61 and a half Rockwell, the hardness ranges all the way from about four foot-pounds with D2 all the way up to 46 foot-pounds with Z-Tough, a huge spread. But at 67 Rockwell, it only ranges from about 2.6 to 5.9 foot-pounds. So it seems the higher the hardness, the less influence the carbide volume has. So low carbide volume steels at low hardness have very high toughness, much higher than the high carbide steels, 
But at high hardness, the hardness itself has such a big impact on the toughness that you don't see the influence of the carbides as much. However, if we zoom in on the high hardness steels, we can see how they compare a little bit easier. And I have a trend line here showing the effect of hardness on toughness for a range of steels with a similar carbide volume. In this case, T15, Rex45, Rex76, and ZMAX, they all have around 14 to 18% carbide volume, where the Veneta 60 and Maximet are 22%. And you'll notice those are below the trend line. Rex121 with around 30% carbide volume, it's even another step below Maximet and Venatus 60. Another thing to point out was that the variability in toughness testing of the Venatus 60 was higher than the other high hardness high speed steels. In general, the lower the toughness, the less variability I see between coupons. So a very high toughness steel like 50 foot pounds might range all the way from 30 to 55. But a low toughness steel often only varies by 0.5 or 1 foot pound. And if you look at the spread in the three tests of each of these high hardness, high speed steels, the spread was bigger than the others. I'm not sure why this is, if it's related to any property of the uh, Veneta 60, maybe because its carbides were the finest of all of them that led to easier crack growth in certain scenarios, or maybe it was just randomness. We are talking about tests here, unless we're doing, you know, uh, many more coupons, three times more coupons. We probably can't say too much about the variability, but I think it was worth pointing out that there was more of a range in the measured values of the Veneta 60. So to conclude, the Veneta 60 had toughness about where you would expect, similar to Maximet. Its wear resistance was a small step below Maximet, similar to Zmax, which was a little bit surprising. We discussed why that might be in terms of uh, predicting vanadium carbides and the tungsten molybdenum carbides and how we still need to do some more experimentation with Maximet to see if its proportion of vanadium carbides is higher. But overall, uh, Maximet and Zmax seem to have a little bit more balanced properties. So Zmax has higher toughness at similar edge retention, or Maximet has similar toughness but better edge retention. Uh, we also explored the interesting history of Venata 660 and some of the uh, fights, the arguments between the metallurgists, which is really fun. And of course, there's lots of other 5% plus vanadium 70 Rockwell powder metallurgy steels that have come since, but Venata 60 was the first. So I think it deserves some credit for being first. So thanks everybody. This was really fun.